like, share, comment. Your interactions help us to be able to give you as much content as possible, and it's free. So again, I'm seeing some people saying hello. Thank you so much for everyone who's joining us today. We will be stitching our background block, which is from our watch and stitch. Now, I've printed out a portion of mine so we can see it to follow along. If you happen to have your watch and stitch uh, booklet and your pages with you, we're on page 34, these background blocks. Now, this is a really simple project, but it's very versatile and has a lot of great uses. So the first things, you always have your materials list. We've started out by hooping a piece of no-show mesh stabilizer. This is what all of our quilting projects and quilt blocks go on here to need a good design. We like it because no-show mesh, or cutaway in some other brands, is a good base for your quilt block. It doesn't affect the hand of your project, it's nice and soft, it's not crunchy, and it doesn't have to be washed out or removed. It stays in that project. So for this and all of our quilt blocks, we start by hooping a piece of no-show mesh. All, you don't need a hoop this large, all you need is one that will fit your design. And in all of our tutorials, as you know, on those machine steps pages, we give you the sizes each of the files come in. So you'll see all that information here. We'll be stitching out our A size block today, and we'll be stitching uh, this beautiful BB1 background block one. So I'm gonna go ahead and load my no-show mesh, my stabilizer only, into the machine. Make sure when you're hooping, it's nice and tight, kind of drum-like. That'll prevent extra movement within your design. So we're loading that in now. Now for the first couple of machine steps, your color doesn't really matter. We typically like to use a lighter color for our batting, just in case. That's always what we'll place first after our placement stitch. So if you're wondering, what do I do now? You load your file, and the first thing we always give you is that squaring stitch, which is a placement for your batting. So you'll go ahead and run that. I have a color threaded in. I'll go ahead and begin by running this squaring stitch. You'll notice as this goes around, it's one time because it's a placement. So it's just going to travel around and show you the dimensions of your block and then where to place your batting, which will be the next step once it has uh, stitched out here. So I know it's kind of white on white here, but you can see it stitched this square right around up here and all the way around it has this nice square shape here. Once that squaring stitch is completed, then you'll place a piece of batting. We like to use several kinds here, either an embroidery bat batting, a cotton or a bamboo, or this particular piece is warm and natural. So we're placing that directly on top of those stitches. Now I have a piece that's almost the exact right size, but it's important to make sure that you're covering all sides of your design. You'll see here your placement. I just want this to be big enough to go over the top of the stitches. Then you'll run machine step two, which is your tacking stitch for your batting. You'll notice when this runs, it'll go around twice to make sure everything's nice and secure. Go ahead and run that step as well. Remember, if you have any questions along the way, we have some lovely folks here that are hoping to answer those. So just type in any questions or comments that you have, and don't forget to say hello. We're going around for that second time now. Again, our tacking stitches always run twice to make sure everything's nice and secure. Right, now that that is nice and secured to our stabilizer, we'll go ahead and remove the hoop. And I'll show you what we have. Nothing special yet, but this is a foundation for your block. So you can see everything's tacked. I know it's a little hard to see, but that's, that's okay, nothing special yet. We have our stabilizer 
and we have our batting that is tacked here that'll be the approximate size of your quilt block. So we're going to trim along these tacking stitches on all four sides. I'll do part of that off camera and then I'll show you exactly where we're trimming up close. Again, we cut our piece close to size because we like to minimize waste as much as possible. So I'll just be cutting off a little bit. I'm using a good pair of double curve applique scissors. I like these little sharp friends here. Now you can see that I've cut just one side so far. So I just have a little bit of excess here in the top. I want to repeat that on all four sides up to these tacking stitches. When you've completely trimmed, you should be able to see just a little bit of that original placement. That is a good thing. Oh, a question, yes. I know they make black batting. When do you use that? Oh, so someone asked about black batting or a different color batting. You absolutely could use, um, if you have a darker color base fabric, you surely could use a black batting or a different type. Um, wouldn't hurt anything. I definitely wouldn't use it under a lighter colored base fabric, but it would not hurt. Uh, one of the tips that we like to do here in house is actually something that I've stuck with as a force of habit. We like to use a lighter color thread as well to tack your batting, even though you won't necessarily see it. If I had used, say, a navy for this, and I came back on top and had a lighter base fabric, you might see some of that through. So let me show you a little bit more here. Um, if you can see, I've come right up to those edges. You wanna get as closely in as you can. We're gonna try to zoom in so you can see. There's just a little bitty channel here between the, the placement, the original squaring stitch, and the tack of the batting. This is deliberate, and you'll see it on all four sides. That's how you know you've trimmed tightly enough. The reason we do this is later when you go to sew these blocks together, you have that teeny tiny channel with no batting. It makes life a lot simpler. Now we'll go ahead and return our block, or excuse me, our hoop to the machine. You can see the trimmed batting is here. And I have gone ahead and trimmed up a piece of base fabric. Now, my base fabric, I'll show you here. The front side of it is a beautiful solid. On the back, you'll see this white. We've gone ahead and trimmed up our piece of fabric, and we have added some backing onto that. We're going to take our backed fabric. That's optional, but we like to do it in-house because this extra layer of iron-on backing is really good for stabilizing your fabric. Because this design has some bean stitches on top that are a little heavier, we've added in this iron-on stabilizer as backing to our fabric. And it helps you see which side is right versus uh, reverse. So I'm taking my fabric again, just a square, face up, and I'm covering over the entire piece of batting. Now the trick here, since my fabric's solid, totally okay for wherever I place it, whichever direction, you wanna make sure you have enough seam allowance on each side. And what I mean by that is, we want this block to be useful when we're finished. So we like to leave about a half an inch, or I use my finger as a guide, about a finger width of extra fabric after the tacking stitch. That way this block will be nice and easy to attach to everything later. So when we pre-cut our base fabric, we cut one inch larger than our design. That way it is nice and easy, uh, no extra math. So our next machine step, three of four, is our tacking stitch. Normally we would use a color that matches our fabric, but we're gonna go ahead and tack in white just so you can see that. So we'll run our third step. It's our tacking stitch. Remember we're tacking in white so you can see it on camera, but we typically get as close to fabric as possible. You can see the seam allowance. This is my excess on all four sides as it goes around. And remember that tacking stitch is gonna go around one more time.
again, remember to leave your seam allowance. Like I said, I like to use my finger as a guide. You can see front, top, bottom, all four sides. I have about that same amount left here. If you have a little more than that, that's okay. If you have a little less, that's fine, but it can make it a little more tricky to attach this block later. So now we have come to the what I call the pretty part of our block. Our final machine step are the design elements. We're going to do them in a contrasting color, so I'm going to leave this, this kind of off-white creamy color on here. You, of course, could change your block if you wanted it closer or if you wanted it a little different. Uh, it's up to you if you want contrast or not, but just so you can see, we're going to add in those bean stitches. Now, this beautiful bean stitching technique is super simple. So this machine, uh, one machine step does the whole design. And that's how each of these work within your watch and stitch background blocks. But I want to show you while the stitches, because I don't want you to go to sleep. I know here on the East Coast, it's right after lunch. So I don't want you to go to sleep while those stitches. But I want to show you some other samples from this and show you some other things that you can do with these blocks. These beautiful background blocks are, like I said, bean stitches. Here are a couple of others from this collection. So you can see here these beautiful bean stitch designs. They're stitched here. The bean stitching is just a, a type of stitch to di different density. It almost looks a little more hand stitched. Now this one has kind of a, a frilly, beautiful design here. There are some others as well that look a little more free motion style. So if you can see this really pretty one here, you can see how they have a, a stop and a start point. Now this is the one we're stitching in a different color. So if you can see this one, the block is kind of designed to where it almost goes right across it. And you can see where if I were to match up on each of these seams, I can repeat this block side by side and the design will match up and really catch those extra portions. So if I had chosen not to do this in this green color and I wanted to closely match my fabric, it's a great base or a background for your other Anita Good Design designs as well. So maybe you have an embroidery design or something else that you wanted to turn into a quilt block. That's why we call these background blocks because they are a great option to merge in some of your other really pretty Anita Good Design embroidery options. So you can merge these in using your machine. Also, these background blocks are mix and match sizing. If you're not familiar with that, mix and match is a term that we use to make our quilts interchangeable and combinable. You'll see the letter sizes in your machine steps. You can see those. I'm stitching the A size. And I know automatically that A size means for quilting, mix and match, it's right at an eight inch block. So if I choose another collection, this is two background blocks and the center block is from another collection, you can combine these and mix and match them with anything that you have that has the same letter size. So the A size is what we call the standard right in the middle. The B is a little smaller and so on and so forth. And there's double A, triple A, they get super big. But we love that mix and match option that you can use these to make them nice and versatile. They're great for projects or quilting or the base of maybe a zipper bag. You can be super creative with these. They don't have to be just pretty. They're pretty and functional, which we absolutely love. Do we have any questions coming out there today? Let's see. See if I can see these. Why wouldn't I leave batting larger as well? Well, the question was, why wouldn't I leave the batting larger as well? When you go to put these two block, these quilt blocks together, I'll show you one that I have finished. This one has your stabilizer and your batting in it. I'm going to flip it over. When you go to attach, this is your seam allowance. You don't want batting in this extra seam allowance because it makes it that much harder to stitch. The way we have these digitized is so your batting stops right in here. It makes it nice and easy to attach block to block without having to worry about any extra batting or any extra bulkiness in your seams. So saving that little bit of batting on each side gives you an easier stitching together experience and it saves you some extra dollars too. See if there are any other questions. Someone says these are really beautiful, aren't they? I, don't forget this video. Yep, don't, yep, we wanna remind you as well that you can always watch this again and again and the way these background blocks work, this is how all of our quilt blocks are set up. So anything maybe you've seen from us that's a tile scene or something really amazing or fantastic, like the one that came out in April, 
if you've seen this, We the People, I'm stealing the cover. This tile scene, don't let that intimidate you. The construction and structure of that is exactly like this in the beginning. Stabilizer, squaring, batting, tacking, and then base and applique. It's really all constructed the same way, just more detail. So don't let these larger tile scenes intimidate you. They're just a block at a time. And if you can do this, I know you can, then you can do any of these as well. So while this is stitching a little bit, I have some goodies and some other things I wanna show you. But you already know, it's time for a prize. So if you wanna type in, if you're watching live, type in the word quilt for a chance to win a Need a Good Design gift card. Type in the word quilt, and we're gonna have a random winner. We'll give you just a minute to get that typed in. Yes, I have two questions. Ah. Mm, absolutely. So the first question, while you're typing in your, your word to win, quilt, I'll answer a couple of questions. So the first one is, are there any collections that have background blocks? Absolutely. So there are a couple of different options here. Anything that we have, we will tend to call it free motion. So there's some large collections, free motion frenzy, and there's some smaller themed collections. There's Christmas free, free motion. There are a lot of other designs all types of themes you can think of that use what we call this free motion technique. And it's designed to have a similar feel across different themes. It almost looks like traditional free motion quilting, but it's created just like this. So you can get a lot out of it. Anything free motion has these beautiful background type stitching. And any of our one, two, three collections also have background blocks in them. So what that means is they're larger collections I haven't forgotten the prize. Don't worry, I see y'all typing. Our larger collections that are called one, two, three have background blocks as your one. Then you can add in a, an embroidered frame, folded fabric frame as the two. And then the three, they include embroidery designs that you can merge on the top. So we have several one, two, three collections that are, there's Christmas, autumn, spring, and there's also a neutral quilting one, two, three, and even a radial. So if you like this style, Look for anything free motion and anything with that one, two, three. You can check out all of those on our website. All right, do we have a winner for our first gift card? Yes. Uh, let's see, Kathy Taylor. Kathy Taylor, congratulations. You're the winner of our first Need a Good Design gift card for today. If you will give us a buzz, we'll give you that email link. So it's customer experience at Anita Good Design. We'll put that in the comments. You don't have to remember it all and we'll make sure we get you your gift card. If you didn't win, tell Kathy congrats, hang tight. You know there'll probably be another one here shortly. So let's take a look at our stitching. It looks absolutely amazing. We're gonna let it keep doing its thing. I have some other little goodies I wanna show you and tell you. Is that okay? Can I give you a couple of my favorites from May? I know it's still April, but May is rapidly approaching. And since we're talking about quilting, let me reach over here and find a goodie. Let me take it off this hanger. So this is coming out in May. It's not quite out yet, but it'll be a May's issue of All Access, and it will be available as well. This is a different shaped quilting collection. It's called Crazy Quilt Hexagon, and I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it. Super pretty. Look how awesomely adorable these blocks are. Now, they are created using folded fabric, so they start out, they're a different shape, they start out with the same type of technique, and they have some unique folded fabric and a radial technique going here. But look how cool these blocks are. They are adorable. This collection does include finishing blocks, so you could square it off if you wanted to. But we thought this really pretty flower-shaped uh, sample was just the cutest thing. So this is coming in May. There's some other goodies in May as well. So, are you ready for this? All the stitches. I'm going to show you some stuff. These are probably my two favorites that we've come out with, or coming out with. So this next one, if you like zippered bags, look at this little guy. They have a front and back that's finished, and then they zip. So his little mouth is a zipper. Now he's a friendly little monster, and he has a bunch of friends. So these are called critter cases. There are quite a few, so there's cats, tigers, there's my little monster alien friend. There are quite a few of these, so there's a bunny, there's a unicorn. I could go all day with these adorable, adorable critter cases. And look at the detail. So they are detailed front and back. They are fully functional. They zip, 
They're the perfect size for all your goodies. You can put your scissors, your pens, all kinds of stuff in here. If you knit or crochet, and then they zip close. So perfect size if you have any youngsters or uh, older youngsters. We love these in-house. These are called critter cases. They're done in the hoop. You don't have to do any sewing. And there is a whole little family of sweet precious animals and creatures. Look at the cow. Okay, that's the last one I'm gonna show you for now, but look at him. Ha! He's so cute. So these are, again, coming out in May, along with that hexagon quilt that I just showed you. Let me get my scissors back out. There are some other goodies as well there in this May issue of All Access. So I know some of you are members of All Access. That is our monthly club and you get our standard designs included in that. So I have a May issue, look how big this thing is. I have a May issue here in front of me and it's not technically May, but we're sneak peeking you. So here's some goodies that I'm gonna show you that are coming out in May, if you're ready for this. Are you ready for this? I see some people who said so cute, so I'm gonna show you. So look how many pages and pages of content. I know I'm just showing you a blur of goodness, but everything that we do here at Anita, you always get, just like in this watch and stitch, you always get your tutorials. So you're getting everything that you need to put together each of these designs. This is from the quilt collection I just showed you. You're getting all your information and everything in this huge bundle of goodies. So everything you need is all included. And I wanted to kind of sneak peek you. I'm gonna give you one more peek at this back cover to see, look at some of these goodies that are coming out in May super super good stuff every month you know we come out with the cutest things and all the education you need to put it together so I've, I've teached you a little bit about May I've given you the directions and the way to put together this beautiful watch and stitch block and I'm sure you've already thought but Drea it's the last week of April well May's watch and stitch is also available so if you have loved and I know you have because we've gotten great feedback if you have loved April's watch and stitch, May watch and stitch is now available. So same format, you'll see us every Tuesday. We'll be here live, different educator each time, showing you a project. We'll be completing one together with you, right from your studio, your living room, your, your dealer, wherever you are, vacation even. You can stitch and watch and watch and stitch right here with us every Tuesday. So May's watch and stitch bundle is available on the website. You can grab that now, get all your goodies, and even give it a practice run if you want to. But we'll be live with those ASAP since next week it's for real May, which is crazy. But this is just carrying on and looking absolutely beautiful. If you see here, I know you can see kind of close up um, on the edges over here, this side is complete. We're moving to the middle. But if you can see the kind of linear flow of this design, it is again designed to mimic the original stitching of how a hand piece um, or traditionally quilted design would come together. So if this tacking stitch around the edge was in the same color as the fabric, which we normally would do, you wouldn't be able to see that as much. And then your design kind of blends seamlessly from block to block. So it is a beautiful technique. It makes a great foundation for a lot of other projects. Speaking of other projects, I have a few other goodies that I want to tell you about. You know, anytime we do live, we have a flash sale item. And this is one of my favorites because it is cute and it is practical. We use some cork fabric for it. This is called Bedside Holder. And it was released in 2018. You can see on the tag here properly, it came out in April 2018. Now this is not just cute. Let me show you what it does. It is meant to go between, there's a flap. This is meant to go between your mattress and box spring or under your mattress. That way it is held in nice and tight. And here you have this beautiful pouch. So pretend this is under my mattress so it's not gonna fall out. I'm now a mattress. <laughs> this is your pouch. You can put your remote, your glasses, your book. If you're like me and you fall asleep reading half the time, you have a place to put your little goodies and it is beautiful and decorative. So we chose a cork material I'll show you the back too. It's nice and finished and plain. This is just one of these bedside holder designs, but we give you all the directions and all the designs to assemble. I'll show you another one as well. Super easy, but they are super practical. They have this flap and then they have the design portion on the front. 
and we give you all the directions to put these together so you have a beautiful and functional project. Again, this is Bedside Holder. Came out in April of 2018. That's when it was in all access. But right now, if you don't have it, you can get it for half off. So it's a full collection, but it will be on sale for right at that 35, so half off. You can get these Bedside Holder collections. We used cork, but you could use denim, you could use canvas. Um, I would use something a little heavier like cork, denim, or canvas to get this beautiful finish. And then it just goes right under, again, between your mattress and box spring. And it is a functional um, and beautiful project. So quite a few designs included in this. Bedside holder, get it half off while the getting is good. Do we have any more questions going on out there? Yes. Oh, good. Ah, so the question I believe had come up about backing the quilts, how you can put them together, how we do it. Now, I always say, if you've ever been to one of my live events, and I usually say them in the virtuals as well, embroidery and sewing are a lot like cooking and baking. We have our recipe, you may have a completely different one, and as long as you like the result, you're good to go. What we typically do is we pin everything together, we create, we stitch together rows and columns, and then we back and bind everything. So we do the stitching in the ditch, the backing and binding. I know there are people who like to do it differently. There are some options for sure, but what I would encourage you to do to get more of our method and our technique, we have several videos about how we finish our quilts. The most recent one we did was actually on the We The People tile scene. That one came out uh, this month. And you can see that on our YouTube channel. So if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see one of our seamstresses uh, putting that quilt together and that'll give you a nice fresh take on how we put ours together. But there are quite a few other options. I have um, some friends who use a serger to put theirs together. Um, one doesn't like to, to back or she will not bind. And so she uses her serger and does a wave stitch along the outside. She'll put some fabric on the back and just does some wave stitching and a decorative thread. Um, there are lots of ways to finish a quilt, but we show you typically what we do, which we've done here is we have our backed, uh, our samples here that we put together and it's been kind of backed and bound. So I'll give you a quick flip so you can see what we did here. We did it in a contrasting fabric so you can actually see what's going on. But this is three blocks and again, backed and bound, our recipe. But you can do it however you like. My humble opinion, as long as they're attached, you've done it, right? Nobody's perfect. But we like to do a variety of things. Now again, this is a block that is stitched but it is not backed or bound. I wanted to show you a couple of these so you can see exactly what to expect when you're finished. So what we do, and you'll see this later when it's finished stitching, we again leave that stabilizer in. So you can see the no-show mesh, that stabilizer, the cutaway is still in there. I know that's impossible for you to really physically see, but it's still there back here. It doesn't affect your block, so it doesn't make it feel crunchy. It doesn't feel weird. It's nice and soft but it also gives it some stability and some durability. Look how beautiful this design is. And we've trimmed it down so we have just enough allowance to attach it to whatever else we would like to. And what we would do from here is just choose what we wanna put next to it, and then we would attach everything together. So super simple. We pin face to face, we stitch and attach, we open up and then repeat to make our rows and our columns. So it's a lot simpler than it looks but just make sure that seam allowance that you're leaving here, that's why it's crucial. Otherwise, you might be able to, to bind one and make a pot holder. So it's always important to leave yourself some seam allowance on your blocks. Any other questions? Let's see. Oh, someone said very pretty. Thank you much. Uh, they wanted to know how to get um, the critter cases. How to get the critter cases. Ah, so those critter cases, the adorable animals that I showed you, those are coming out in May. So they will be out very, very soon. May is almost upon us. We're in the last couple of days of April. Look for critter cases, the crazy quilt hexagons, and some of those other things I sneak peek showed you. Those will be coming out in May, so they'll be ready next week, either as part of All Access or they can be purchased on our website. Keep your eyes peeled for those. Any other questions? Uh, somebody wanted to know how to sign up for All Access. Ah, someone said, how do they sign up for All Access? There are several ways. You can do it on our website, you can give us a call or you can email our customer experience and we will be glad to give you the information for all access. 
There are several options, even some financing options. We have all kinds of things to try and meet your needs and get you the biggest ton of stuff for the best price possible. So I know you know this about Anita Good Design, but we are a team of people that work super hard to provide the high quality designs and education and events. We're very passionate about the education portion because we know that everyone wants to learn and wants to be able to do and create designs. And we wanna make sure that we support you with our creation, no matter how simple or complex they are. So we always look forward to partnering up with you, no matter what the format, that way we can make sure we all are learning and growing from one another. So let's take a look at our block and see how we're doing. Oh, it looks so good. We have a few more flowers to go. One of the best parts about these blocks is that it's kind of a set it and forget it. You know, once you get to the design step, it'll just go and go. So we can see those bean stitches, they're coming in and adding in this column here and then it'll fill in the space that's missing. And it is just happily stitching along. Let's see. Another question. Is there a sneak peek of May watch and stitch? Hmm, do I have a sample of the quilted, Gilded Botanical from May All Access? We'll see if we can pull out a couple of May samples since I have piqued your curiosity. Give us a moment. We'll see if we can peek out some more. So May's Watch and Stitch, it is on our website right now. If you want to take a peek at it, you're welcome to look on there and you should get a few little tidbits about what's coming from May. And we are have some lovely ladies literally running across the room to pull out some more goodies for you for May so we can show you a few things. And I'll find my book too. Let me pull up. So there's some sneak peeks requested. Let me pull up some things for May. I'll show you. So this next one I'll show you coming up. So this is the Gilded Botanicals. I'll, I'll do a little cheat here and I'll show you some of this tutorial because it has the blocks in there. Now, I know you can't really see, you can actually see two collections in one here. You can see some really pretty little bedtime critters. And then you can also see this Guild of Botanicals. Now, I'll show you a couple of a couple of pages here that show you some of these beautiful blocks. Now, each of these designs, just like I promised before, we give you the information. We even show you which border gets placed where. So, I'm peeking around so you can kind of see. These beautiful designs have some gilded details. If you can see in the up close with those little leaves and flowers, there's some beautiful bean stitches that are 100% gilded. They're golden. And all of these designs that you see, including the one that's stitching here and the designs in here, we use the same type of embroidery thread. So we don't use any specialty thread or anything unique other than metallics or sometimes matte. We typically use polyester. Um, but you can use different weights of thread if you want to, but we get these beautiful details and the uniqueness from our digitizing. So everything we have here to need a good design is digitized by hand. We don't do any autofill or anything computer generated. We have a team of ladies and gentlemen that digitize and they create these little nuances and the ply of each design. So in things that have kind of these bean stitches, like what we're stitching versus some of the others with fills or satins, or uh, some different running stitches and fills here, that all is determined by our digitizing. We create original artwork. We then have our digitizers translate that artwork into stitches. So that's why we have so much control over our designs is because we truly create them and they are really innovative in-house. So I saw a few questions about threads and how would you do this? All that thread work and all that detail, we do it for you you get to plug in your colors and your shading and you can make as many changes to that as you'd like, but we've really worked hard to make sure those details come through. Let's check for some other questions. Someone said, oh, that's a great idea. So someone mentioned that these bedside holders would make a great walker caddy. What a great idea. So perhaps a little Velcro on the back or something to attach. You could probably use this this flap over the back is uh, for a, a, you know, a mobility chair or a power chair or for a walker. That's a great idea. Uh, maybe by adding some Velcro or a loop here. So we call these bedside holders. They came out in April, 2018, but a few people have mentioned that they could absolutely, I love that idea. They could be modified to be a pouch or a container for a walker 
or a wheelchair, or other mobility device, maybe even a car. You know, we always need extra storage. That's a great idea. I love, love, love when you all share your suggestions and your ideas too. Let's see what else we have going on down here. Let's see. Someone said, will these work in a six by 10 hoop? Um, one thing about our designs is depending on the collection, I'm not sure which one exactly you were referring to, but each of our collections will tell you what hoop size for the background blocks, if you're looking at these, we show you, it's, don't worry about trying to read it here, but we show you the multiple sizes that each of these come in. So because I'm doing a large size of quilt block, this is the kind of the middle size. There are smaller and larger as well, so you can see a mixture. We try to make our designs in as many sizes as possible. That way as many people can stitch them on a variety of machines. Oh, thank you. Someone just brought me something so I can read comments a little more closely. Let's see. Um, let's see. Love all your designs and they're definitely well designed. Thank you, Victoria. We appreciate you. We work hard. Have some other people who are typing in. Um, Lori said, would you only use embroidery thread? We typically only use embroidery thread here and uh, use the digitizer to kind of control the look and the style. You could potentially experiment with something different, but I always say if you go rogue, let us know how it turns out. We'll help you if we need to, but I'll give you our recipe. We know it works. While this is wrapping up, there's some more stitching. Believe it or not, it's getting there. I think it might be prize time. What do you all think? I have a feeling you'll agree with me. So for this time, since this is stitching a beautiful flower design, we'll make it nice and simple. Let's type in the word flower for a chance to win another gift card. So if you're watching live, type in flower for a chance to win another gift card. We'll give you just a moment or two. Ooh, I'm seeing some flowers start popping up. We did post a link as well to that May watch and stitch if you want to look through that and see what's going on with it. Well, we'll give you just a moment or two to type in flower. We have a few more flowers coming up here on our beautiful quilt block. And I have another floral surprise to show you. I don't know if you're ready for this, but I cannot stand not showing you. If you're like me and you love flowers and what human being doesn't, we have a new signature series. You may have heard about it. It is flower themed. So it is Stephen Wilson Studio signature series. Of course, Steve is our owner and our founder. He works diligently here every day. Look at these flowers. This is our newest signature series. Just a teeny tiny sample from it. They are 3D flowers. They are absolutely fantastic. They are realistic. The color and the thread work you see here, there's some organza applique, and each of these amazing flowers is embroidered. I know they look like they're real and put into a shadow box. This is from Sig Series 3. It's out, you can pre-order, you can check out the information on our website. Look how stunning these are. They look just absolutely magnificent. You can layer them and add them to absolutely anything you can think of. They would be beautiful on these background blocks. They're beautiful on clothing. This art piece, I, I told them earlier, if it's missing, it, it might be with me. But now that I've outed myself, I guess I can't do that. But this Signature Series 3 is available for pre-order. It has a ton of beautiful flowers and leaves and multiple sizes in it two densities so you can get a really vibrant look or something a little lighter. They are fantastic and we'll post a link for that as well if you want to check that out, Signature Series 3. But I also know that I've promised you a prize. So who is our winner for this beautiful prize? Anita P. Anita P. Congratulations. You are the winner of our gift card, Anita. Make sure you give us a shout via email. We'll pop that link up down here, customer experience at anita-gooddesign.com and tell us you've won. We have you on our list. Give it, there we go, thank you so much. That way you can contact us and get your prize. So we have just a few more stitches happening here. And by few, I mean, ooh, that was good timing, wasn't it? It is wrapped up. Now let me show you just how fantastic this is. It has finished embroidering. I don't think I could have timed that better if I'd meant to. Now here's what we have come up with. We have a fully stitched block. Now remember, I did my tacking stitch in a color that you could see on camera. 
So this square that you see around it, typically in-house, we would have matched that thread to the fabric, but it looks fine as is. These beautiful bean stitches are absolutely fantastic. If you wanted this stitched motif to be a little lighter in color or a little less noticeable, you could match it closely to your background or you could make it a little more tonal, maybe go a couple of shades lighter or a couple of shades darker, but we wanted a big pop, a nice vibrant color. If I wanted to add something into this, I could embroider my name or I could embroider anything you would like to add into that block. This is the perfect base for it. But now that my quilt block is finished, all I have to do is pop it out of the hoop and then I will be ready to trim it up. <laughs> Let me pop it out. Trim it up and all I need here is just to cut off my excess stabilizer and any fabric I don't need. So by using our method, this kind of beautiful quilting in the hoop method, you don't waste any base fabric. You don't have any excess batting under here. You're using a lot less material and getting a result that's easier to work with. So all I would do now is just take my scissors, wherever I've hidden them, here they are, and I would trim out. You could use a rotary cutter and ruler. You can use scissors. You can do whatever you'd like, whatever is easiest for you. I'm gonna leave my excess seam allowance because I prefer to have as much as possible when I'm stitching, but all you'll do is just trim away your stabilizer and any excess on the edges. And I will tell you, in the event that you find yourself and you've forgotten to leave some seam allowance, sometimes you can get by with stabilizer. I've done it in a pinch. Not recommended, but doable. So I would just go and trim up my block on all four sides, and then it will be ready to put together. Super easy. I didn't really have to do a ton of work. That's my quilt block. So it's nice and trimmed up. You have, again, just some stabilizer in your background. You have your excess seam allowance on all sides. And then when I go to attach it to my next block, it's just like pretending the square doesn't exist. So it is super, super simple to stitch out a quilt block with a need of good design. And don't forget these beautiful background blocks are mix and match. So you can combine them with anything else that is mix and match. I know there's a lot more seam allowance on one than the other, but you can combine these together with anything else you have, as long as it's mix and match sizing. So you have a set of these background blocks they are super simple to book together. Now, I don't want to, to end, but I want to let you know that our watch and stitch has been successful. We have enjoyed today. I know I have. I've been glad to see some familiar names and faces. See if there are any more questions. If you have any other questions or anything um, that comes up, if we can't catch you live, that customer experience email please contact us and reach out to us. We definitely want to talk to you and hear from you. We love your feedback and your suggestions and your ideas. And just say hello. We're fine with that too. But I want to let you know and remind you, this is the last one for April, but we'll have May Watch and Stitch starting next week for May. So it is available. We've put the link up a couple times. We want to make sure you can see it and access it. And you can, again, watch this as many times as you'd like. So maybe you didn't get March, or you didn't get April until now, you can still get those watch and stitch products and you can still access the videos as well. They don't go anywhere. You have access to those forever. So please join us for our May watch and stitch. We're, we'll have one same time, same place next week. And we can't wait to see you then. Thank you so much for joining us today while we stitched out our successful background block. I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day. Please remember that your comments, your likes, your shares, your interactions, those do help us. They help us stay visible and relevant, and that allows us to give you more content. So follow us, subscribe to our channel, and just interact with us here on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, all the places. We love to hear from you, and we can't wait to catch up with you next time. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.